Hi folks, this is Mike with Eminem Precision Painting. This channel is dedicated to showing you what the pros know so you can do it yourself. Today we're going to be doing ceilings. I'm going to show you how to do ceilings, cutting in, how to roll them properly without getting lap marks. For that, stay tuned. Why you still looking at me? All right guys, so tools we're gonna use for this job. These are the tools we normally use. Got myself a nine inch roller frame here. Um, gonna be using a three eighths inch Purdy White Dove nap. It's a woven nap, it's supposed to be lint free. Uh, I do take a step to make sure that there is no lint just in case. Um, we're gonna be using a two and a half inch angle sash. This is a Purdy two and a half inch angle sash. I use a stiff brush, especially on textured walls. Um, you're gonna have yourself, instead of using a pan, uh, some people use a pan, a lot of do-it-yourselfers will use a pan. I like to use the five gallon bucket with five gallon grid. It's a lot more stable on the ground and you're less apt to step in it. Trust me, I've been doing this for over 20 years and I have stepped in pans before. Uh, not fun. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna work out of with my roller and that. And I use, like to use, one gallon painting grid with a four inch roller with same stippling or nap, three eighths inch white pretty dove on this guy, and a two gallon cutting bucket. And I'll show you why we use that uh, as we get into the video. But I'm going to also use be using frog tape, delicate surface. Um, along my corners, it's, it's really bumpy. If you've got flat walls, you don't have to worry about the caulking part. And I'll get to that later, but yeah, we're gonna be using delicate surface frog tape. I'm using some clear caulking, regular caulking gun. Um, so yeah, it's paintable. Make sure it's paintable caulking. And eminence paint. So a lot of people say there's an issue with eminence with lap marks and whatnot. Uh, I've used it for a, a, a lot of years. Never had any lap mark issues and never had any coverage issues. We did put a little blue spot on the ceiling and we're gonna test out coverage and we're gonna test out these lap marks today. So we're testing this paint today, see if it actually works because a lot of people have issues with it. So last but not least, you're gonna want your extension pole. This is just a little cheap extension pole. I do have better ones, but for the purpose of this, the ceiling's really low, so I don't need it. And one of the things when you're using an extension pole, it's good to have one longer than you need when you're painting ceilings because you don't want your arms above above your uh, heart all day. So you wanna keep them down here where you can just kinda relax and roll it in. So those are the tools you're gonna use and let's get started. All right guys, so anytime we do ceilings, first thing I do is go to the middle of the room, try to clear anything out that I possibly can. Anything that's gonna get in your way because you wanna be able to move freely across your room. Um, that being said, if you can't move something, as you can see the TV behind me here, it's just a pain in the butt. It's okay where it's at because it's on a wall, like it's against the wall and it doesn't really affect my ability to reach the corner of the ceiling. So I'll go ahead and leave that and I'll wrap it with plastic. Also, I laid drop cloths where I'm gonna be painting. So you don't have to worry about drips and things of that nature when you're painting overhead. Cause once you start this, you don't wanna stop and move things if you possibly can. You stay tuned. All right guys, we've got a ceiling fan in the middle of this room. So we could take it down, but just to save time in this case, if we had a lot of them, I'd take them all down. But just to save time in this case, I'm gonna use this frog tape delicate surface. And I'm just gonna go around and tape right where the fan base meets the ceiling. And I'm gonna go all the way around my fan that way. And it's just gonna save a little bit of time from taking it down and putting it back up. So now we're gonna go to patching holes and I'll show you that here in a sec. All right guys, so you wanna go along your ceiling, make sure there's no tape up there, things of that nature. I had some tape on this ceiling. Take that off. Uh, I'm gonna go look for your holes. Um, if you're not gonna reuse them, some people like have flower pots or whatnot hanging, but if you're not gonna reuse them, 
What I do is I take the back end of my putty knife and I'll kind of just countersink it in there. And then I'm using some uh, spackling paste from Sherman Williams. Uh, this has a 30 minute dry time, dries really quick. So I'm gonna use that. Take a little bit of that out and fill my hole like such. All right, guys. So just go around your whole room, look for holes, any imperfections, things of that nature, get them filled. And we're going on to step number three. All right, guys. So if I was painting my wall on top of my ceiling, um, I would go ahead and take my ceiling paint, just overlap it on my wall because my walls are easier to cut in at the end. Okay. So, but in this case, we're just painting our ceiling. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some tape on my, where my ceiling meets my wall. It's because the reason I'm using tape is it's going to allow me to get a straighter line. And uh, also when I'm looking overhead, I don't have to pay as much attention to detail looking overhead. And if you do that all day, your neck's going to be sore. So what I like to do is take tape, mask it off, and then we got, we're going to throw some caulking in there to really make a straight line. And you want to go right up in the corner like this, and then I'm gonna run a bead of caulk. Right here, I'm gonna use clear caulking. And what the caulking does is, the best way to put it is, if you, if you got a heavily textured corner like this, and your tape goes across, and you stretch your tape across like you're supposed to do, um, it, I don't care how good a tape you have, you're gonna have some bleed through in that gap right there. And what the caulking does, the clear caulking, it fills that gap so that when your paint goes on top and you peel your paint, you're gonna have a straight line right across that tape line. If that makes any sense um but yeah and then the caulking is going to dry clear so you're not going to see any paint that or any caulking that may have seeped behind the tape also so all right folks we're going to do that and i'll show you the caulking process right now Alright guys, so I got my clear caulking here, um, got my tape up on my wall, I got it tooled really well. Um, so I'm just going to run a thin bead uh, and get yourself a damp wash, washcloth, wet preferably. That way you can keep your finger wet so that when you finish that line, it's going to be nice and smooth. It gives it a really smooth deal. So you're just going to throw a bead of caulking in the corner. As like this, and you're gonna go back, and you're gonna get as much off as you possibly can. And that should give you a nice smooth line. To paint too. Okay folks, so do that around your whole room, anywhere your walls beat your ceilings, and here we go. Alright guys, so now it's time to paint. Uh, we're going to cut in first. This is where my 4 inch roller and my 2.5 inch cotton brush come in. Uh, and my gallon bucket, or my 2 gallon bucket. We're using, like I said again, we're using Eminence today. Um, we're going to test it out. Apparently people have problems with it. Open your can, make sure it's shaking well. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, if you don't have a 5 in 1, you can use a spoon. Uh, spoons work really great. So you guys have four. One thing to note on the lip, you want to clean that off, any excess, anything around your outside. That's because when you put this back on, 
and you hit it down, it doesn't splatter everywhere. All right, let's get painting. Okay guys, so first thing I wanna do is load my brush up. I'm gonna paint right where that tape meets the ceiling. You wanna stick it an inch, inch and a half down into your paint and tap on your sides. You know, tapping on your sides does is it actually pushes the paint into the bristles. Tap on the sides, come to your wall. And put a nice even coat. Don't be afraid to really lay it on there. And I'm using a stiff bristled brush for this textured wall because it gets into those crevices better. Okay, you wanna wanna do that, and that's where my roller comes in, my little four inch roller. What I like about using this is, for one, when I'm coming back to roll my actual ceiling with my nine inch roller, I got a good distance away from the corner, so I don't really have to worry about trying to knock right up against the corner. Also, another plus is you wanna load this guy up too. Another plus is it's matching the stippling from my nine inch roller, so I don't have to worry about brush marks in my corner. So I wanna start out and then work my way back in to avoid getting globs of paint in my corner that I have to brush out and then redo this process again. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. If you get paint on there, take yourself a rag. It's another good thing about tape. And you guys want to get as close to the corner as you can and feather it out. Okay, we're going to do that all around our wall, where uh, all around our ceiling, where it meets the wall, where our tape is. And then I'm going to show you the next step. All right, guys, another spot where this four inch roller comes in handy. So when I'm up here cutting around my ceiling fan, I can go ahead and roll all the way out to the outside of my fan blades and I don't have to worry about But I will cut this part in around here with the brush. And I'll just continue around like that. But this is where the four inch roller comes in handy. And you can just do that around your ceiling fan. And it'll match your stippling. So, just remember to roll the direction of the light. Go towards the light. guys so you want to load your roller up I got about two inches of paint in there maybe a little more but you can see how I'm like really just soaking it and then I'll run it on here to push that paint inside the nap soak it some more push the paint and this is how you want to load your roller up all right all right let's paint a ceiling all right guys, a lot of guys get, we got our nap ro loaded up here. A lot of folks get intimidated with ceilings. Uh, they're just walls, folks. Um, got everything covered, drop cloths down. You don't really have to worry too much about too much spillage or splatter. One thing to keep in consideration, or taking a little tip for you, when you're moving from your bucket or your source of paint to your ceiling, you want to kind of spin your roller, because if you let it sit in one direction too much, it'll it'll drip on you so and I start these 
see, like this. I start these just like I do walls. I'll go a little bit inside from the corner. You can use the M, you can use all kinds of patterns you want to. I'll show you the way I do it. So I'll start in right here. <sighs> Get it nice on there and then go back into my paint. Just like such. And then I'll go back and I'll lay it off. And make sure it's important guys when you lay it off to always do it in the same direction. And when I get right there, I lift off at the end, I lift off. And when I lay it off, I'm going in 50% or half a roller length on each pass. All right, now I'll go half a roller length. Like that. Now come back. Lay it off and go right back into my old paint. And when you're laying it off, you don't want to put a lot of pressure. Okay, just light pressure. That way you don't get any edge roll marks or the edge of your roller actually makes a mark. So we're gonna just keep working our way this way, this direction. We're back into our wet paint. And then again, roll it off in the same direction every time. Because if you have, we're working with flat, but if you have any sheen on your paint, on your walls, it's gonna show a different, different shade if you don't roll it off in the same direction. All right? All right, you guys. Um, so we're gonna work in sections. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we're gonna keep a wet edge. And uh, what I mean by that is, we're gonna, you guys wanna look up here, I don't know if you can see it. We're gonna work this section, right? And then we're gonna work this section up here, right? Because we don't want this part to dry. We always wanna go back into wet paint and that's important. We're gonna keep a wet edge, all right? So if I just work this section, you can work it all the way over if you want to. It's relative to humidity and temperature. But for the purpose of this video, let's say I worked it all the way over. I'm not gonna start on that side because if I start on that side, I got an edge over here drying. So it's really important to keep a wet edge. Right? All right, you guys, our ceiling's all done. Got two coats of eminence on, zero lap marks, got good coverage. Like I said, I've been using this product for a really long time. I know it's a poor test uh, because these walls are textured. That being said, I've done flat walls thousands of times, never had any problems with lap marks. If you guys just follow these instructions, you can't go wrong. Just remember to paint in the direction of your major source of light and laying off is the most important part, you guys. So after you get that paint on and spread out, make sure you lay off in the same direction, do the 50% overlap, and you can't go wrong, folks. That being said, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and of course, subscribe to our channel for more. We got a lot coming up in the spring, you guys. So if you wanna see some more how-tos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and that'll be it for now, and we'll see you on the next one, you guys. Are you still looking at me? Are you still looking at me?